Good morning, artists and art students. Today we will be working with the grid to create a photorealistic image of food. Hopefully you've taken an image of something you've eaten recently that's really disgusting or delicious looking, um, and today we're going to start documenting that. Usually in class we would work from life with the grid, but since we're working remotely, we'll have to just work from the photograph. You're going to start by squaring your image to the page. So you need your photograph, you need a pencil. I suggest something in an H range. I'm going to use a B so you have an outside chance of seeing. Um, and then you need your photograph. So just like in sighting, the sighting and measuring drawing we did, you'll start by measuring the photograph. And that's eight by six doubling it, so 16 by 12, and then squaring it to the page. So I took away 18 by 12 from 24 by 18, and I ended up with six on each side. I measured three in and three down to find my corners and connected my square. The next step, I need to grid this image. So, in order to grid my image, I'm going to make one inch, a one inch by one inch grid. So I'll go along all sides. Just making a mark at the one inch mark. If you don't have a photograph, I have put this one up on Blackboard. Um, this is my standard photograph for folks who have forgotten their photograph or don't have a photograph to work from. I encourage you to work from your own so that your drawing is yours and is unique and isn't mine. Once you've made a mark at the one inch point all the way across on both sides, you can go back and just connect them to create a grid on your image. So I would go all the way down, then I'll go all the way across as well. If you have trouble seeing in some areas, you could use a pen to do this. Um, just make sure it's something thin. A Sharpie will block out too much of your image if it's a thicker Sharpie. All right, so I would go through and grid my entire image. I'm just going to grab one I already gridded so you don't have to sit here and watch me grid my image. So here we go, I have my gridded piece. And now in order to, I'm going to double it just like I did with the sighting and measuring drawing. So in order to double it, this is one inch by one inch squares, I'm going to double my squares up here as well. So I'm going to do two inch by two inch divisions and grid my drawing. So I'll go through and I'll do two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. And again, use something in an H, especially if you're heavy-handed. Um, you want to be able to have your pencil line as light as possible for this project because we're gonna be working over it with pastel and we don't want our grid to show through. Sorry you have to sit here and watch me grid this whole thing. These demos are always extremely uninteresting. If you wish, if you have an idea of what I'm doing here, you can always fast forward to the next part. Just make sure you really do know what you're doing. 
So I'll go through, and again, this should be very light. I'm going to be relatively heavy handed with it so that you guys can see. But this should be as light as possible. You still need to be able to see it, but it should be just enough to see it. put um, a little two by two inch mark here in the middle to help me get across because I have this wimpy 12 inch ruler. And again, be very light. I'm trying to make sure you all can see. Okay, so I have a completely gridded paper ready to go, ready to put my image right in here. Again, you guys are going to work with an H for this, as, oop, as light as you possibly can. I am going to work with something in a very high B. Let's see what's sharp here. 8B looks pretty good. I'm going to work with an 8B today. So. Start up here in this corner and in order to be as exact as possible if you wish you can eliminate the lower part of your drawing so I would just take a piece of paper and just tack it over the lower part of your drawing so you can draw square by square right here for now. I'm going to have to move it when I get over here, but for now I can see it there. All right, so I'll start in this square. If I look very carefully, I see that there's nothing in this square. It's just a pale gray. So I go across my first square, one, two, three, four. Number four is where my Oreo starts. If it helps you to number or letter your squares, go ahead and do that. It's easy to get lost inside of the grid. So on number four, I see that I have this Oreo. Now there are two ways you can do it. You can freehand or you can now sight and measure within each square to get this Oreo in exactly the right place. I'm going to just freehand um, because I know that my hand is strong enough for this to be fairly photorealistic and I don't need to necessarily 
sight and measure. One thing you can do to kind of give yourself just one more um, advantage is you can put an X through the squares if you want. Um, and if you divide them in half with an X, if you have your ruler and you divide them in half, it'll just give you where the center is. Um, and then that kind of gives you one more structure to work around. And you could go ahead and put X's through here, but again, I don't feel the absolute need to do that. So I know right about in the middle is going to be my cream here. Right below it will be my other cookie. So you're just going in, and again, as light as you possibly can, I'm going to go darker. But as light as you possibly can, you're going to put in your Oreo. And you're not going to keep going and draw the Oreo. You're going to just go square by square and try to document exactly what's happening just in that square. Don't put in any value. This should be a contour line drawing. So now I'll go to the next square. And of course you could isolate this even more. You could cut a little square in a large piece of paper and just go square by square completely in isolation. I like to see a bit how it connects. Um, so I tend to just go row by row. And really stick to what you're seeing. It's very easy here to start to try and draw what you think is happening instead of sticking to what you're seeing. I'll go all the way up. I think my Oreo got a little. If you mess up, you can just erase. And again, yours is going to be really light, so you won't even notice. Okay. If you want, you can put in your value, and that could be as simple as adding the big values, or as complicated as going in and adding all these little value ridges. Now, if you do add your value, don't add, don't actually go and shade, no shading. You're just contouring the value so you can see where it will be. And again, very lightly, so you can see where it will be where you go, when you go into shade. So that's it for my top row. I'll go down to my next row. And again, instead of continuing with the Oreo cookie, I'm going to start all the way over here in square number two, so I'm going two down. Um, in square number two, I see that I actually have a little bit of frosting, but it's very, very light on that cupcake. And just like you did in square one, as lightly as possible, you will put in your frosting. Now this is where adding the shapes of value might be helpful because there's not a lot of structure to the frosting, but it does have these value shapes in there and you may want to lightly put them in. And now I can actually see there's like a tiny bit of frosting coming right up through the bottom of those two squares too. This is why I like to continue to see the connection because here and there there's something really light that you might just lose if you're looking at one square. So you'll go through square by square again just like you did at the top with the Oreo um, and then when that's complete you'll have a drawing to work with. Um, I'm going to pause and jump ahead a bit so that you guys don't have to watch me do my entire contour drawing. 